Before loading, see that the projector is cocked. No attempt must ever be made to place a bomb over a protruding spigot. To load, remove the muzzle plug and dust plug from the bomb tail if present. With the drum tail to the rear, the bomb is placed in the bomb support nose first so that the guide ring is engaged between the loading guide plates. Make certain that the tail is pressed as far down as possible by pressing on the drum tail ring with the flat of the hand. Take care not to place the fingers in front of the ring. To aim and fire the Piat in the anti-tank roll, start by raising the foresight and backsight. The foresight is in the form of a bead. The backsight consists of three apertures. The top is sighted for 110 yards, the middle for 80 yards, and the bottom for 50 yards. It should be noted that the distance from the top of the bead to the shoulder of the foresight when viewed through the backside aperture, represents a height of 6 feet at 100 yards. Raise the shoulder piece into the shoulder. Hold the projector firmly into the shoulder with the left hand either over the webbing gator or grasping the front of the trigger guard. Place the thumb with the right hand behind the trigger guard grip and the first two fingers on the trigger. Then push the safety catch forward. To fire, press the trigger when the aim is correct. Against head-on and retiring tanks, keep the foresight in the center of the aperture and aim at the center of the tank. Against crossing tanks, keep the foresight in the center of the aperture and aim one length in front of the tank from the center. The swing of the projector must not be checked at the moment of firing. After firing, the Piat can be reloaded immediately. The trigger pressure is long and heavy. After pressing the trigger, there is an appreciable delay before the bomb is fired. It is essential to maintain correct hold and aim during this delay. The secondary role of the projector is as a housebreaker. Its range is up to 370 yards and both low and high angle fire are possible. When used in this roll, the shoulder piece will always be positioned horizontally. To rotate, depress the lever on the bottom of the mechanism casing, then rotate the shoulder piece counterclockwise until the lever latches into the hole on the rear end cap. Set the desired range on the sight. Centralize the bubble by adjusting the length of the monopod or by using other available support in conjunction with the monopod. The white line gives the aiming direction. Loading is the same as in the anti-tank roll. When the aim is correct, fire by pressing the trigger. When firing, the head should be kept down by the side of the projector. These rules for aiming must be applied with some common sense. Depending on the range and speed of the tank, the lead may have to be lengthened or shortened. Moreover, when using the 110 yard aperture, aiming up and down may be necessary, since a comparatively small increase or decrease in range affects the trajectory of the bomb considerably. Thanks for watching. If you found this video interesting or helpful, go ahead and give the video a like and subscribe to the channel. For more information on this firearm and others, head on over to historyandfirearms.com.